Is our kirtan party here? Hare Krishna. Mm. Welcome, Guru. Hare Krishna. Thank you for joining us. So we'll have a few minutes of kirtan, followed by a regular Bhagavatam class. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Namaste Saraswati Devi Kaurapani Pacharine Nirvishesha Shunyapadi Pashatya Dishatarine Namaste Saraswati Devi Kaurapani Pacharine Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atreta Gadatha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhatta Vrinda Jai Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atreta Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama Hare Hare Jaya Prabhu Pada 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 Jaya Jaya Prabhu Pada Prabhu Pada Prabhu Pada Jaya Jaya Prabhu Pada Jaya Jaya Prabhu Pada Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Padiprajaka Charja Stotra Sri Srimad AC Bhakti Vedanta Shami Mraj Prabhupada Ki Jai.
इस काम संस्थापक आचार्य श्री गुरु पाद की जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव की जय नाम आचार्य श्री हरिदास ठाकुर की जय प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्री वासवि गौर भक्त की जय श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंड राधा कुंडी गोवर्धन की जय वृंदावन धाम की जय नृपदीप धाम की जय जगन्नाथपुरी की जय गंग मई की जय जमन मई की जय तुलसी देव की जय भक्ति देव की जय समवेत भक्त वृंद की जय ऑल गौरी श्री असेंबल डिवोटीज ऑल गौरी श्री असेंबल डिवोटीज ऑल गौरी श्री असेंबल डिवोटीज गौर प्रेमानंदे हरि हरि बोल Thank you all very much for coming or coming again. Special welcome and obeisances to Ravindra Swarup Prabhu. And I see that Purusharta is there. Is that Purusharta my god brother or is that Purusharta another Purusharta? That is a Purusharta Prabhu of uh, bass playing fame. Excuse me? Of bass playing fame, he plays the bass. Yeah. Yes, my God, brother Purusharta Prabhu, obeisances, obeisances. Krishna, my obeisances. Thank you for your association. Hare Krishna, thank you for yours. So we're reading Shrimad Bhagavatam, first canto, chapter eighteen, text. We've come as far as text twenty-nine. Hmm. Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Namo om vishnu padaya krishna preshtaya bhutale Shri mate bhakti vedanta swaminiti namine Namaste sarasvati deve gauravani pracharine निर्विशेष शून्य बारी पाश्चतेश तारे श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्री वासवि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे better there was a question that arose um that was held in abeyance at the end of of monday's class but i don't is that uh, is our questioner here it's, it's uh, open to question um, okay so we shall proceed then Maharaj Prakshit was today. Yes. Oh, and as uh, I guess I should say for those who may be here for the first time, that if you do have a question or a comment to add at some point, then just feel free to unmute yourself and perhaps uh, turn your video on and uh, jump in. Most welcome. Hi, Hi, Krishna Maharaj. Hi. I'm. I am here disguised as Elizabeth Elson this evening. I see. So I'm I'm kind of undercover but thank you very much for remembering my dangling participle from last time. <laughs> um and thank you for uh, giving me an opportunity to go ahead and uh ask my question. Uh I'm going to try to uh tie together a few things that you've been speaking about. You your theme has been uh the idea that krishna sends us signals uh through different events in our lives and as devotees it's incumbent upon us to try to pick up on those signals whereas we don't have quite the same expectation for those who are materially absorbed um and uh in discussions with a variety of people not just in, uh devotees uh there has been some sense that uh we should speak about what we will take away from our current situation what will we learn uh we will learn that it is possible for the air in delhi to be clean uh 
uh, it is possible for the Jamuna uh, River to be pristine. Uh, things we thought were not possible perhaps actually are possible. Um, and we, uh, in the Hare Krishna movement, uh, in a sense, take some pride in or have some sense of identity as being forerunners of environmental uh, concepts in terms of seeing the divine nature of the material world. Um, and uh, I am curious to know if you personally think that one of the signals we're getting is that uh, even though it is the duty of a sannyasi to travel and enlighten uh, grihastas uh, about the advantages of not being fully vested in material life, uh, that perhaps it is not necessary to constantly travel on airplanes and uh, all over the globe uh, to perform this particular duty and in so doing provide a, perhaps a better health situation for those who would normally feel obliged to travel and set a good example of a low carbon footprint uh, as we try to impress upon uh, society in general the value of uh, living a more natural life. Okay, well, there's a compound question for you. Uh, the, the first question, the first part is, well, what are we supposed to take away from this unusual um, pandemic? And is it perhaps that sannyasis don't need to travel as much, that uh, they can accomplish the same thing with a lower carbon footprint uh, by staying off airplanes and, and so on. Um, well, I think certainly Krishna is sending multiple messages and, and different devotees will come away with different realizations from, from all this. It's not that we'll have like, um, you know, an official ISKCON position that will define what realizations we're supposed to come away with. Uh, and if there is such a thing, we'll all ignore it. But, um, <laughs> but uh, we'll all have some, some deeper understandings, we hope, <laughs> some, some newer understandings. Um, as far as uh, travel and, uh, well, as far as what would we say, um, facility for, for spreading Krishna consciousness, I think certainly all of this has highlighted uh, for us and for many other groups, for that matter, the how much you can accomplish through conferences like this without having to uh, physically get together. Um, we knew it, of course, and we, we took advantage of um, digital media, but not to this extent. And I think with the, without as much appreciation of how much we can accomplish, uh, in some ways, this sort of get together is, is better uh, than even a, a physical get together. In some ways, physical get togethers are better also. Uh, but there's certainly a lot to accomplish this way. Uh, that said, um, there's, there's also much to be said for, for meeting people face to face. And it's the duty of sannyasis to travel, travel around. Maybe we'll more follow in the footsteps of Bhakti Marg Maharaj, the literal footsteps of Bhakti Marg Maharaj, and walk from destination to destination. We, who knows, we may not have much of a choice uh, as far as travel options. We, we don't know what's to come. I don't think that our, um, our carbon footprint is really what needs to concern us. The, of course, we try to be frugal and not overburden the earth. The Prabhupada's typical position on this was that these um, intrusions or, or on, on the environment uh, should be reserved for the devotees. That the newspapers, uh, the, the, the printing business, business of making paper, which is awfully uh, water intensive, apart from being destructive to trees. It, it really uh, takes so much water to make paper. Uh, that that paper making industry should be reserved for, for Krishna conscious literature. All the rest of the literature should go 
but our literature should stay. Uh, so the planes also, or the, the, they should be used for Krishna's service. Um, and Prabhupada himself didn't seem to worry about carbon footprints. He, he had a mission to accomplish. Um, so I, I, I don't know that I would walk away with it with a, you know, a deeper sense of environmental responsibility and therefore, uh, which would oblige me to, to stay in one place. Um, I don't think so. But um, more of a sense of, of what we can accomplish in other ways. And also, I would say the big signal is the um, precariousness of life in its entirety. Uh, we're thinking that we're on a firm platform, but it's, it's not firm. I remember one time I was, when I was in Los Angeles with the BBT, I was sort of dozing away at my desk. And um, all of a sudden it just like fell on, on flat, fell off my chair and fell on the ground. And I, I thought, huh? And I, I, when I got up, um, my feet were shaking. And then I realized that there was something like an earthquake and I, I went outside on the street and the street was shaking. So you put your foot down on the firm earth and it moves. It's not firm. So uh, that was only, you know, some earthquake that was someplace miles distant, but had a little bit of a, gave us a little bit of a tremor in, in LA. Um, but it, it sort of brings home that uh, the very earth that we stand on is not as firm as, as we imagine it to be. And uh, here we see that everything that we've been counting on to be um, stable it can be uprooted just like that. Uh, our, uh, our economy can just be smashed to bits. Uh, our health system can be stretched and, and overloaded. Our, uh, we can be confined as in, uh, as in wartime. We can live in fear that uh, if we don't go, if we talk to the wrong person or, or get too close, we could be infected with the deadly virus. So uh, Krishna can can change all the rules just like that, or, or just destabilize everything just like that. We're thinking it's all very stable, very dependable, um, but nothing is dependable. This body uh, can be can be and will be destabilized, destabilized just like that. We're depending on it. Everything's you know resting on that, and it can just be. Uh, Uh, bent out of shape, knocked to the ground, uh, blown apart. So many things can happen to this body. Uh, where's the stability in this material world? Uh, but wait, I'm, I'm, I'm a prime minister. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a member of the royal family. I'm this, I'm that. No, uh, anyone. But that's, the, to me, the larger takeaway. The uh, environmental takeaway is... Um, I think, for me, um, of less consequence. Does that answer your question? It does, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I should add that it, there's, you know, that's sort of a, a, a helicopter view of things, how everything can be destabilized. But then it comes down to, you know, my, my personal life mine or yours. Um, we have our plans, we have our expectations, we have our aspirations, we have this and that. But finally, we're uh, helpless, really. Prakriter uh, Avasham Avashat, we're all uh, helpless. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur says that we're being uh, tossed by the waves of the material energy. Uh, and therefore, our uh, we're in need of shelter, and the only shelter is Krishna. That's um, 
as Srila Prabhupada said, that is a fact. Anyone want to add something on this? Because as I said, it's not uh, that there's an official set of realizations here. Uh, would anyone like to to add or to, to respond to Hari Kirtan's question? Okay. Yes. Um, I just what you were saying just now reminded me of I think it, I don't remember now if it's in the Gita or in the uh other time. The problem says we exist in an atmosphere of non existence. Hmm. We exist in an atmosphere of non existence. Yes. You know, it's just whatever we think is real and, and, and existing is just, you know, just liable to disappear at any moment. Whether yeah. we cause it or Krishna causes it. Yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're existent beings, but we're living in a, an atmosphere of non existence, including the, the body itself is. Non existent. Nasato vidite bhava bhava vidite sadhana. Non existent. My, my bank balance, my, my nation, my, my family, my body, my mind, they're all non existent in, in the sense that they're uh, not permanent. And uh, they'll at some point uh, dissolve. and only the, the living being himself, the soul, will, will continue to exist. Thank you for that. You're existing in an atmosphere of non-existence. It's in the, it's in the introduction to Bhagavad Gita. Mm, thank you. So we've come to text 29. Prikshit Maharaj has entered the the hut of Shami Krishi and found him apparently in meditation. And uh, the king was thirsty, but the king, the sage didn't offer any water, uh, not even uh, a welcome or kind words. Uh, he, there were none, he didn't observe any of the protocols of, of proper reception for a guest. So the king became uh, angry. Uh, he considered himself neglected and he became angry. Abhuta Purva Sahasa Shutrid Bhyam Arditatmanaha Brahmanam Prachabhud Brahman Matsuro Manyurevacha. O Brahmins, the king's anger and envy directed toward the Brahmin sage were unprecedented being that circumstances had made him hungry and thirsty. Abhuta Purva, this had never happened before. Sahasa, all of a sudden it just uh, happened. Everything's going on an even keel and that all of a sudden something happens. That occurred in the life of uh, Pandu. He was uh, in the forest hunting and he's there with his, his wives, they were on sort of an excursion. And all of a sudden he uh, shot an arrow thinking he was shooting a, uh, a wild animal and his arrow uh, hit a sage and, and his wife. Uh, and uh, it, it, therefore the king was, was cursed. So all of a sudden, sahasa means just like that, all of a sudden, uh, his whole direction in life uh, changed. Uh, so that that can happen. Uh, and so many, everyone, one of us must know examples in our life or the life of a friend where all of a sudden everything is just changed. Some some circumstance, probably translates so, so, circumstantially. So here the circumstance was Shutrid Bhyam he became uh, distressed, afflicted by uh, hunger and thirst. Uh, and then, uh, Matsura Abhut 
Matsara Manyu Evacha. So he became uh, envious, uh, or this envy is, is you know, like a, a hatred or an, antipathy. Uh, and Manyu, he became angry. So the uh, Prabhupada comments that the king knew well that Brahmins, sages, children, women, and old men are always beyond the jurisdiction of punishment. This is, is the Vedic culture. It was all right. The king had a right to, to be angry and to uh, even uh, punish the, the citizen. But this is a Brahmin. Brahmins are beyond the normal uh, jurisdiction of law. Uh, similarly, uh, sages, children, um, you don't arrest a child for <laughs> something an adult would be arrested for. Women also are held uh, not accountable. And old men also are uh, not to be punished. Or the king, the king can do no wrong. But so Prabhupada said it was okay for the king to punish a subject for coldly receiving him or for neglecting him, uh, but not a, a Brahmin sage. So this was unprecedented, certainly um, even when, um, when Prichit Maharaj came ac across the personality of Kali, uh, uh, Kali uh, beating a, a bull, he, he uh, said, this is unprecedented. This has not happened uh, ever in the in my kingdom or uh, in the kingdom where my forefathers were in charge. So uh, we have to deal with you uh, very uh, strongly. The um, we have to deal with you very strongly. So here, uh, I'm sorry, somebody distracted me from. So this, this was unprecedented. So it was unprecedented that the king would be uh, so disturbed by hunger and thirst that he would uh, act uh, enviously, as Prabhupada says, or angrily toward a, a Brahmin sage. So this was only possible because Krishna ordained it. Uh, there's a question here from Vijay Krishna from Portugal. I have a question, but I don't know how to do it. Uh, would I help you? Yes, I'll help you. There are two ways you can ask your question. Uh, the sort of uh, less fun way is you could type it out, or the more fun way is if you go to, the, at least on my screen, it's the lower left corner, and there's there are two buttons. One says uh, mute or unmute, and the other says uh, start video or stop video. So if you click on those, um, if you click on an unmute button, you'll be unmuted and then um, whatever you say can be heard. And you could also turn your video on and, and, and be seen. That's how that works. Um, if it doesn't work, then you could just type, um, which uh, some people prefer also. Are there any other questions or, or contributions here as uh, Jai Krishna is thinking about that? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Shuman. Maharaj, uh, I exactly did not understand why is it written envy over here? Like how is Maharaj Parikshit envious of Swami Krishna? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Uh, Matsura, the, I'm not quite sure about the Sanskrit, uh, Matsura, although I can look it up, I actually have a faster way of, of doing it than on my phone. Um, let's see what it says about Matsura. Uh, Matsura. Selfishness and hostility is one of the meanings of Matsura. And it's also an older meaning of um, envy. 
if you look in your English dictionary, you find that one of the meanings of envy is, is hostility. It's an old meaning, sort of uh, op, just about obsolete now. And as far as I can see, envy to, in the usual way we understand it is as jealousy, or, or being sorry that somebody has something we don't have. But often he seems to use it with that meaning of hostility. And that seems to fit the context here because there's no indication that there's something the sage had that the king wanted. Is that okay, Shuma? Yes, Maharaj, thank you. Okay. Anything else? Satu Brahma Rishar Angshe, Katasun Urugang Rusha, Vinir Gachchan Tanuskotya, Nithaya. Purama The uh, while leaving the hut of the sage, the king, being so insulted, picked up a lifeless snake with his bow and angrily placed it on the shoulder of the sage. Then he returned to his palace. In the purport, Prabhupada says the king thus treated the sage tit for tat, although he was never accustomed to such silly actions. And that's really what this is. I mean, come on, you know, the sage doesn't give you a cold reception. So you say, well, okay, you know, you're gonna treat me like that. I'll treat you, I'll show you, you're here, have a garland. And garlands him with a, a snake. I mean, really, that's childish or, or, or silly. Um, but that's what the king did. By the will of the Lord, the king, while going away, found a dead snake in front of him. The snake didn't have to be there, but just, you know, like the prop manager, uh, stage manager, the, the snake was there. Uh, and the king thought that this sage who coldly received him might be coldly rewarded with the garland of the dead snake. Uh, so again, this is by uh, Krishna's arrangement that this happened. Okay, here's Vijay Krishna's question. Um, I said that stability in the material world is possible for those who take refuge in Krishna. Well, it's not exactly what I said. Um, in the material world, the stability is in the spiritual world. I was just reading a um, verse in the Katu Upanishad where it was talking about the position of stability. Uh, the uh, young boy, Nachiketas, wanted to know about uh, the position of stability. Uh, so that position of stability is beyond this material world. In the material world, there is no uh, stability. Um, it's like a, well, just look at it. <laughs> Everything that seemed to be stable has become unstable. Um, so, uh, but the stability is uh, possible for those who take shelter, take refuge of Krishna. So yes, that's where the real stability is. Krishna's uh, lotus feet are stable. Uh, so the question is, why is it that sometimes it's easy to chant and sometimes we couldn't care less for the chanting? Well, this is our uh, diseased uh, condition where uh, our natural condition is to love to chant. In the spiritual world, uh, they're always uh, chanting the glories of Krishna or the great souls, Satatam Kirti Antomam. Uh, they're always uh, chanting. Uh, and sometimes we also get a, get a taste and sometimes we, uh, we dry up and we, we don't have a taste. So this is the probational stage. In the pure stage, the pure devotees uh, are under the protection of the spiritual uh, nature of the Lord, and they they have that mature taste. They, they, Rupa Goswami says, when I chant, I wish I had thousands of tongues and thousands of ears. Uh, they don't uh, sometimes feel, ah, I don't know about chanting today. They, they're absorbed. Gopi Bhavarasamrita Dilahari Kalo Lamagno Maho. The Goswamis were uh, in the waves of the ocean of devotional service. But where 
not quite absorbed in the material energy, but we're coming from that position and we're being fished out. Uh, we're being fished out of the ocean of material existence. I think that picture is there in, um, maybe it was Bhagavad Gita, the pictures there, how Krishna is coming on Garuda and pulling the devotee out of the ocean of material existence. Uh, so we're uh, being pulled out by the grace of Krishna and the spiritual master, but we're not in the perfect stage, and therefore we sometimes have a taste and sometimes a no taste, and therefore regularity is so important. Practice, abhyasa yoga yuktena. Uh, by practice, this steadiness comes. Uh, those who are doing, uh, what is that? They call it, um, there's a fancy word for it, but basically it means um, physical exercise. Um, someone might remind me what the term is. But anyway, um, you know, they do it regularly. They, every day they, they do their uh, weightlifting or their sit-ups or whatever it is, because by that regular regimen, hmm? it regimen, yeah, but the, uh, but there's a, a sort of a nice word that people use these days, or a nice term that people use. Uh, yeah, not calisthenics, there's something else. Anyway, um, um, <laughs> in school, they, the old term was physical education, phys ed, which was, uh, anyway. Um, anyway, whatever it, you, you might want to call it, you have to do it regularly. Uh, otherwise, uh, and I was just reading Sachin Nandan Raj had written in his book about chanting, which is really quite an excellent book, The Living Name, that um, if you sometimes chant and sometimes don't, then you lose momentum. So that it's um, when you come back from having neglected the chanting, now you have to get, get up to speed again. Let me see if I can quickly find what he said. It was really quite uh, to the point. Um, give me a moment. Mm, I want to find something, of course. Ah, here it is. We can't be irregular in our practice of japa and kirtan if we want to become accomplished chanters. Only regular practice will effect change inside. If we want to boil water in a kettle, we wouldn't apply a little heat to the pot, then switch off the electricity, then turn it on again, then switch it off again. The water would never boil. It would warm up, cool off, warm up, then cool off. Each time, we would have to use so much energy to again raise the temperature to where it was when we switched off. The same holds true for chanting. We have to do it regularly for a good length of time without any periods of non-chanting. Uh, yes, that's practice. Um, I hope that's all right. Now Katya has a question. If there's time for it, there's time for it. It is said that Krishna directly takes charge of what's happening with the devotee. We can see that Maharaj Parikshit was placed in this peculiar position by the will of Krishna. But what about us? Even though some of us are not pure devotees, can we still say that whatever happens to us is Krishna's direct arrangement? Uh, yes, we, we can still say that. Um, from um, Okay, the, 
first of all, Maya is also Krishna's arrangement. Maya means another meaning, mercy. The, uh, the punishment awarded to the criminals is also arranged by the government, or it's the, the uh, mercy of the, the king or the, the governing authority. Uh, and it's also to uh, deliberately place the wrongdoer in an awkward position so that he can, uh, as they say, straighten out and, and fly right. Uh, so even if we think that this has been, this situation has been thrust upon me by Maya, but Maya is also Krishna's energy. Maya is also Krishna's energy. Uh, suppose I broke my arm or I, I lost my, my money or, you know, a hundred different things that can happen. I was insulted by someone or you name it. Uh, so I may not think that, oh, Krishna has directly uh, sent this because I've, he, he's personally reciprocating with me. Uh, but even, of course, we can take it that way, but uh, we can say that Krishna's energy has worked in this way. Krishna's energy has put me in this difficult situation and behind it is Krishna. So whether I take it as Krishna directly or Krishna's energy, it's Krishna's kindness that he's arranged things in such a way. Uh, and we can accept it as, as Krishna's mercy, not just, and if we see Krishna's hand there, then we ask, well, you know, in one sense we say, well, what is Krishna, why is Krishna doing this? Or we say, um, well, you know, Krishna didn't personally have to do this. He's got his, uh, for us, Shashakti Vivadaiva Shuyate, his energies that are automatically doing things. But now, how do I respond in a Krishna conscious way? How do I respond in such a way that I um, act in service to Krishna under this circumstance, or, or that I advance, I use this circumstance to advance in Krishna consciousness? How do I get a message uh, from this? King Prichit didn't think that, um, well, how could I have, later you'll see he regrets having insulted the sage, but he doesn't think, well, this must have been Krishna uh, arranging things in such a way because otherwise I never would have insulted a sage. So it must be Krishna's mercy working on me. He just thought that I, I'm so sinful. Uh, I'm such a, a rogue that I've insulted a sage. He didn't have to think that uh, Krishna has somehow or, or rather uh, done this. He's intervened in my life again because I'm his pure devotee. Uh, but he does take it that uh, under these circumstances, what should I do? And so he, uh, as a devotee, thinks, well, I should, uh, I've been cursed to die. I'm going to die. I should, I should leave my kingdom. I should... Uh, detach myself. I should give up my royal dress. I should go to the Ganga. And there when he meets the sages, he thinks, well, should I hear about Krishna? So this is, these are the, the, the kind of thoughts that a devotee would, would have. Uh, so we can still say that whatever happens to us is, is Krishna's arrangement, direct or indirect. Uh, we may not uh, think ourselves privileged or qualified for Krishna's direct arrangement, but there's no difference between Krishna and Krishna's energies. Even his material energy acts spiritually for the devotee. Uh, is that all right? Or and would like anyone like to add anything to that? Um, Tiffany has a, a question, a follow-up. How does free will come into the equation? This free will keeps uh, coming up, coming up, of course. It's like one of those uh, uh, items that one always has to take into account. Uh, you know, the, the uh, what do they call it? One of those forces in... in in uh, physics, like, yeah, we have to take this into account. So free will has to be taken into account. Uh, we have a tiny bit of free will. Uh, 
Um, we have a tiny bit of uh, free will. Raj Pariksit uh, wasn't forced. He didn't have to respond by going to the Ganga. He could have responded by saying, uh, well, seven days to pack in as much uh, enjoyment as I can get. But uh, he had the, the freedom to do that. But as a devotee, he didn't. Free will doesn't always mean, doesn't mean you, you're you always thinking, well, should I go right or should I go left? Um, you know, I'm going to go right. Uh, but I could go left. Prabhupada gave the example that a brahmachari can have sex. He, it's it's a, a, what's the word? A, uh, you know, he's physically capable. It's, it's, it's an option. But it's an option he doesn't exercise because he's a brahmachari. But can he? Yes, he can. He's, he's so equipped that he could. But because he uses his free will in a certain way, he says, you know, the question doesn't arise, or if it arises, he at once dismisses it, because this is against uh, his, what he wants to do with his free will. Uh, so that's the spiritual world. In the spiritual world, it's not that everybody's always thinking, well, should I stay up here? Should I fall down? Should I uh, serve Krishna? Should I enjoy? There's there. In pure consciousness, they simply think of, of pleasing Krishna. But they have a fall-down capability. Uh, they have a fall-down capability. They, have, they are marginal, and marginal means uh, constituted in such a way that if I don't take shelter of Krishna, I'll fall down. Uh, but by, by natural choice, they always choose to serve Krishna. But the other option is open. They can do the other. They're not uh, forced. They're not, they're deprived of the ability to do something else. They have the ability to do something else. They're just not interested. Just like the devotees of the, of the Krishna consciousness movement, the people on this conference, you could all, uh, you know, after, after this class, you could all go out and, uh, for you know, Kentucky Fried Chicken, if you want. Um, you have, uh, well, maybe they're closed, but otherwise, uh, you could go out and do that. But nobody wants to do that. If you're, you'll start the, you know, Marge, like, what's he talking about? And why did he uh, raise an example like that? It's, it's so distasteful. Nobody would, nobody here would think, oh gosh, I really miss that, yes. Um, but, but could we? Yes, we could. Uh, will we? No, we won't. Uh, but the freedom is there. And we use our free will by saying, forget it, we're not interested. Is that okay, Tiffany? Yes, it is. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Maharaj, I wanted to just... Uh, <clears throat> Who's that? And come closer to your microphone. This is Madan Gopal. Madan. Just a quick point on, on that same point on the free will. Mm -hmm. uh, and you mentioned a point, uh, a, you said that we have very limited free will. And I think I was thinking more about it just yesterday that we have far less freedom than even we might be aware of. Like for, and like, for example, I said, okay, by tomorrow, I'm going to clean uh, all the windows upstairs. So I think I'm going to do it. But then when I actually try to clean them, it, I, all I could do was one window instead of the 12. And I realized that I may have the desire and even freedom to do it, but I don't have the ability. I'm, I'm, I'm conditioned by my modes. So even that, even that window of freedom is a lot narrower than sometimes we perceive because we are under the influence of the modes plus the combination of my past karma and so many other things. And, and, and this, this is a very tiny sliver of freedom into which I have to squeeze in my Krishna conscious practice and maybe improve myself. Yeah, my body, my mind, that, you know, I might think I'd like to fly in the air, you know, or without getting in a plane, I can't do it. Any bird can do that. But um, I'm, I'm limited by, by my body, and I'm limited by my mind. I might think, you know, I'd, I'd like to be a nuclear physicist, but, um, you know, the option is not really um, available. Um, 
in the mind, I, I might think I'd, I could, I'd really like to be like a uh, concert pianist. Um, but the problem is I'm tone deaf or, you know, I have no musical sense. Uh, I might imagine myself uh, a musician, but I, I really don't have it. So we're, we're, we're very circumscribed uh, territory. And we're thinking we have all the freedom of the world. That a lot of us here in America, we, we grew up with uh, the little train that could, yes. uh, <laughs> right? It, the little train has to go over a, a big hill yeah. Yeah. and it, it starts, uh, it's like impossible. It's just a little train, but I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Woo, woo, you know, pretty soon he's, hooray, he's over the hill. But, uh, you know, some of us are already over the hill and whatever we think we can, we can't. We can't. It's not just that by thinking I, I can do anything that I've set my mind to. That's like a, a common uh, platitudinous lie. Whatever I set my mind to, I can be. Whatever I, you know, I can create my own reality. I can, I can make myself whatever I want. Yeah, positive thinking does have some scope for entering into things but no it doesn't i'm not the controller uh circumstances you know people who, who started who, who you know we're going to launch their if some item somebody was like launching a restaurant and, and you know four days later the uh, covid virus uh, shut everything down so you, we have our plans but um not just the i think i can i think i can and Maya says, well, yeah, you may think you can, but I think you can. It's boom. <laughs> Take that. There's one more question here from uh, Katya. Um, Srimati Devi has, oh, Srimati has a question too. Um, how should a devotee take the situation? Why the material energy is smashing every now and then? Uh, is this service to Krishna? Why every now and then, every day? Maya's business is to, to smash the conditioned soul. You see uh, Durga writing on the, you know, with the tree shul, uh, letting that uh, Mahishasura have it. Uh, this is what material energy does. Every day people die. Every day people are going to the hospital. Not just now, but always. Uh, every day people are suffering. Every day people are exploiting others and being exploited. Uh, every day there's, there's trouble. It's not, you know, sometimes it comes like in a, you know, big uh, extra helping, but it comes in a big wave, uh, sometimes literally a wave like a tsunami or a viral wave. Uh, so sometimes it's, it's more pronounced, sometimes it's less visible, uh, sometimes we're just quietly suffering, sometimes we're <laughs> you know, it's writ large, as they say, um, but it's always going on. This is not something unusual uh, that the material energy is smashing every now and then. No, smashing all the time. Uh, and if she, if she pulls you up a little bit and gives you a little bit of, of uh, enjoyment, probably gives the example that it's like the, the criminal. Uh, you might recall that in New England and also in India, this is sometimes what's there that a criminal would be punished by being uh, thrust under water or a, a wrongdoer uh, would be pushed under water. And when the person was practically dead, then they drag him up <gasps> and then push him down again. So we get a little enjoyment in the material world. What is that enjoyment? <gasps> and then down again. It's just the way it is. Is that okay, Srimati? And Katya has another question. We're just about out of time. Everything everywhere is performed in terms of three principles, jnana, bala, kriya, knowledge, strength, and activity in every field. Uh, okay, it's a comment, good. Uh, in every field, if there's not full knowledge, full strength, and full activity, an endeavor is never successful. Therefore, if one wants success in everything, one must be backed by these three principles. Yeah, um, bala, jnana, bala, and kriya. We need knowledge to succeed. 
we need strength and we need endeavor activity. Uh, otherwise, things are not just going to happen. Uh, and finally, we need um, daiva, Krishna's sanction, Krishna's uh, permission. Otherwise, nothing can be accomplished. Uh, or whatever we accomplish can, can be smashed. Although my knowledge is good, my plans make sense, my business plan is all tacked down, my supply chain is uh, secure, um, my strength is good, my, my staff is, is hand-picked, excellent people. And you know, if Krishna doesn't desire, or if Krishna just chooses to throw a monkey wrench in the works, or if Maya, on account of my past activities, throws a monkey wrench in, in the works, a spanner, as they would say in the UK, then boom. The, uh, one of my examples is that there was a, a mint that was heavily advertised when I was a kid growing up. They had TV ads, and it was uh, it was a breath mint, and it was a digestive mint, and they had they were the market leader, and they had you know tremendous name recognition, and uh, they only had one problem, that the name of their mint was AIDS. So, you know. All of your knowledge and your 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 strength and your endeavor can't salvage that name after the HIV uh, came into existence. Uh, nothing we could do, uh, and in so many ways, um, fate steps in. There was another example I gave the uh, the other day: some uh, Olympic athlete who was, you know, for sure going to win the competition, and he missed his plane. Plane was delayed or he missed it or something. Couldn't be there, couldn't compete. Uh, Katya says, reminds me of Prabhupada saying, everything everywhere is performed in terms of three principles. Uh, yeah, oh, she already said that. So, oh, I see, there's another something coming down here. Oh, yeah. Corona AIDS. beer. AIDS and Panchatattva says, Corona beer. Apparently, there's a brand of, of beer, Corona beer. Uh, this virus is not going to be good for sales. We're uh, just about out of time. And Vijay Krishna says, yes, every day Maya is trying to convince me that chanting is not the best choice. So how to conquer Maya and her temptations when it's well known that to fight Maya in order to win is not as easy as I may think. Just say no. I think that's a uh, slogan these just say no maya wants to convince you get lost what is that um gana sinatmana um atishto tishta bharata chapter three yeah uh, I'm not, not seeing what I'm looking for, but the, the idea is that with armed with, oh, chapter four, of course, at the end of chapter four, it said that armed with knowledge, one should uh, fight. Tasmad, jnana sambhutam, hritstam, jnana sinatana, chitvainam samshayam yogam, atishto tishtabharata. My dear, uh, Arjun, uh, this uh, sangshaya, this doubt, uh, is uh, aganasam bhutam, born out of, out of ignorance, it arises from ignorance, uh, it's situated in the heart, but chitva enam, one has to uh, cut, cut down uh, this uh, these doubts with Gyanasinatma, uh, with the weapon of knowledge. So this is transcendental knowledge received through the line of the Acharyas from the spiritual master. And so we have to 
you know, take it and in that way uh, defeat Maya. Atish to Atish to Um Okay, there's just another. Can I quote maybe later a person in Katu Upanishad verse? Um, yeah, Shuman, I'll um, drop me a note and I'll find you the verse. Um, okay, our time is, is done. We're at 9.01. At this point, I'd like to thank everyone, especially uh, Rabindra Suru Prabhu and Purusharthi Prabhu. Thank you so much for uh, coming. And um, at this point, we'd like to, well, two things, no, one thing really, um, hand this over to Madan Gopal and he can let us know of coming attractions. Thank you very much, Maharaj, for a wonderful class and uh, especially like the interactive question and answer. So we encourage all the devotees to participate with their comments and questions. Uh, His Holiness Jadweta Swami will be on this channel every Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, now, tomorrow we have a continuation of our speaker, Shyamananda Prabhu. He will be speaking on a different topic. Uh, the topic is intriguing when Arjuna fought with Krishna. Uh, understanding Arjuna and discovering our own situation. That's the subtitle. So don't miss that. Tomorrow evening, Shyamananda Prabhu of Chopati will be addressing us on the same channel at 8 p.m. Um, next week as well, I mean, coming up, we have a quite a few, uh, quite a nice lineup of speakers. Um, this Saturday, Ivankar Bhatt Prabhu, and then Sunday evening at six o'clock, Chaitanya Charan Prabhu of Chapati. And then next week, Tuesday, we have His Holiness Bhakti Marga Swami Maharaj. And next week, Thursday at 7.30, a little bit earlier, His Holiness Lokanath Swami Maharaj. And then on Saturday after that, it's Radhik Raman Prabhu. So please keep joining us and uh, continue to share with us uh, your insights and your participation. Thank you very much. I'm also giving a uh, Bhagavatam class tomorrow morning at 7.15 Eastern Standard Time at uh, Bhakti Center. I've just put up the, uh, the link that has the password included, I believe. Um, or let's see. Yes, well, I'll give you separately the meeting and the password. Because um, I know there's some devotees who are here from... Uh, uh, later, who were in a, a, a more advanced time zone. So the, uh, oh, I'm sorry, that's gone to Vijay. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Let me send that to everyone. And let's do it again. And if you keep the meeting on for, uh, Long enough for people to, to catch that. Um, there's the uh, the link and the meeting ID and password. So if you'd like to come to that, you're also welcome. And there was a question here: When is Amarendra Prabhu's class? Um, could you say that? Amarendra Prabhu's class is on Thursday, April twenty third, eight p.m. on the same channel. Okay. Yes, uh, My class tomorrow is 7.15 in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. And Amar Andrews is April 23rd at 8 p.m. And also, we're starting a six-week class tomorrow on Katu Panishad. Um, Vidya, do you have the, uh, the link in all of that? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yeah, I can put it in the chat box. I'll put it in. Okay, so let's leave the chat box open for a little bit longer. Um, we're starting a six-week class on the Katu Panishad. Vasudeva and I are um, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's it. That's it. jointly doing that. There's also...